last time we talked about the human eye and and trying to break that down or at least my interpretation going over multiple books of that breakdown so now we're gonna go into um, the nose here once we find that Let's see jawline mouth scapula ears there we go the nose all right so kind of gonna go into like the same order of books that we did last time but um again this one is anatomy for sculptors by oldest zarns and sandus Kondrets. Um again it's it's a very good condensed visualization of uh anatomy notes and um really good reference um not just for sculptors but also for uh for those who want to do 2D illustration but have a hard time understanding the human figure in 3D volumes, this helps quite a bit on that breakdown. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm gonna go through this book and kind of interpret what I see for for how to make the nose. And I'm gonna try and learn how to draw it in the end. Um, just like I did in the last video for the eyes. So here we go. All right. Gonna rearrange some stuff here. Okay. Classical nose. Okay. All right. Classical nose. So I, I have a chopstick here <laughs> um, to, to point out things a little bit easier, I feel, uh, rather than using my fatty baby fingers. So let's see. In here, this looks like an upturn or a view from below. It's kind of showing how the nostrils are positioned um, according to where the lower lip is. <clears throat> so... It looks like um, these bottom, uh, I guess, of the bean, the bean of the nostril, <laughs> um, actually lays flat on top of where the upper lip starts. And then it looks like it swoops out into that nostril. Um, and it looks like that there is a, a harsh angle like this um, from it almost looks like a like a 45 degree angle going this way and then the flat of the nostril going in this way and then um, I don't know what you call that the tip of the nose going at a more vertical slope this way and then it kind of rounds off there so it's a lot more square than I'd imagine it um, I guess usually when I've drawn it, I would just like make a circle or something and then just connect stuff, but it looks like it's a lot more um, planes of the fate angular kind of thing. Um, there's this ridge here, which is a rectangle shape. Uh, I'm not sure why this is highlighted versus the rest of the face. I wonder if it's because they're just indicating that this part is zoomed from here, but I'm not sure why this photo would be on the right side versus being on the left side. So I wonder if they're just indicating what the nose affects on the face. But I'm not sure because there's, no, uh, there's no writing in this book. I mean, there is, but very few notes. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have a rotation of the nose here, and, and this is for like a classical statue. Um, and then uh, we have the wireframe version here, and then we have different chunks of the nose that are represented here. Um, I don't know these names, I guess we'll learn that um, through the other book 
so we can go into that maybe after this one but there is the nostril here and it looks like there's a little bit of a flat plane and there's um like this red muscle that kind of attaches the corner of the tip of the nose and then goes around the nostril down to like maybe the jowls of the mouth like um and then there's the bridge of the nose here hmm okay okay all about noses so let's see this says noses change with age so these angles Basically, the older you get, the more angular the nose gets. It's indicating um, they're showing with a child that it's very slopey. And then with a, a, a older child, it's starting to angle up. And then with um, an adult or young adult, it looks almost to be uh, right angles. <clears throat> Here, um, it's kind of indicating the relation of the edge of the nose versus is the, the mouth and so for adult it looks to be um, that the nose goes straight out um, perpendicular to the mouth which is at a right angle and then for a child it looks like a child it's a lot more upturned and um, it has a wider angle Let's see parts of the nose Okay, so okay, so these are actually the, the names of the nose that we saw over here. So going back over here, I can now name these parts off. So um, this portion here that's between the eyebrows in purple, that is uh, called the root or the radix. And then the yellow I got correct. This one is called the bridge and then this is the tip and then this is the nostril and then down below here like this part that we saw that connects that connects the um, tip of the nose to the upper lip is the septum so like you see a lot of people have like their septums pierced and stuff <clears throat> so that's what that indicates uh, this portion here in the book um, is talking about females versus the male nose and uh, it let's see so this range these marks here are kind of indicating what they feel is the idealistic nose versus the more extreme noses um, it's a little bit faint uh, to see here, so maybe if I turn off this light for a sec. Okay. So here you can kind of see, um, in, we'll, we'll start here versus here. So it looks like in women, it's almost childlike where the nose, um, turns upward while the men, it looks like it is a harsher right angle. Um, However, in the more stylized versions down uh, at the extreme ends here, like uh, they push that more. So the women in the more extreme size looks like the upturn is dramatically um, a wider angle while the, the male angle tends to close in even further downward. Almost like a witch's nose. Um, it says here, tipping up the point of the nose will make it look like a child, will make it look childlike. Giving it a concave or thin bridge will make it look more feminine. So, okay. So it's saying in males that they have a wider bridge versus, uh, versus women. Okay. The, the reason why I kind of hesitated is because that their examples kind of negate that because this woman has a pretty wide bridge versus this guy. So I'm not sure. Let's turn this light back on. Um, okay. 
So, I guess notes to take. Um, going back, this is the root, this is the bridge, the tip, the nostril, and then underneath is the septum. For children, they have a wide upturn of their nose in relation to their mouth. Um, in women, this is also relevant, but uh, exaggerated in style. Um, for men, they have more of a right angle of their nose from their mouth relation, but um, for more extreme styles, it seems that this angle becomes smaller. And for women, the bridge of the nose is a lot more narrower for more feminine look, while for men, it seems to be wider for a more masculine look. So. <clears throat> I think that's it for this book. So again, that's uh, Anatomy for Sculptors by Elda Zarns and Sandis Kondrat. Um, we're gonna, let's bust out the other book that's similar to this one um, by the same people. I usually don't want to go into this one because it, last time I went into it, it was pretty extreme with uh with how in depth of the anatomy and bone structure it went into because it was talking about the, the pulling of the muscles because this is a book that is about facial expression probably more aligned for those who are doing like blend shapes or animation and things like that okay <clears throat> So, um, let's find out where the nose is in this book. So here are the eyes. We went into this pretty deep. So I'm probably just gonna skim it a bit and then maybe talk a little bit about the anatomy of the nose in here. But, um, I think this book is a little bit too intense for all that. So I guess we can start with this. So, um, we have this section here. So, let's see. So technically, I guess the, the root that we saw earlier of the nose that was between the eyebrows is, in this case, called the glabella. And then 17 is the root of the nose. Oh, interesting. So the glabella is actually the, the part of the forehead that is between the eyebrows, while the part that leans in, the, the connecting part between the forehead and the nose is the root of the nose, which is this part, 17. Okay, and then uh, 18 is, again, the bridge of the nose. 19 is the tip, and then 20, um, in this case, instead of calling it nostrils, it's called the, the ala, or ala, which is wing of the nose, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it nostril. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else this book has about the nose. Here's the eyes. It might actually not have that much because the nose doesn't change much during expressions, I don't think. Besides, like, maybe the nostrils expanding. Hmm, okay. So actually it does. So, here we go. Okay, so... Question is, do we want to know all this stuff? Does it really matter? Hmm. I think for illustration purposes or even sculpting purposes, unless you're doing like blend shapes or something, um, don't feel too much of this matters. Um, I think it's good 
maybe to point out things like uh, this purple muscle here called the compressinarium minor and this muscle here um, called the dilator nares anterior. And um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm pointing these ones out is because I noticed in a lot of drawings that um, this kind of produces a lot of the characteristics of the shape of the nose. Like when some people have like a really bulbous tip of the nose or some have like that little divot. Um, that's something to kind of think about. Um, on this side, you can even see that like divot, like when people have the, the butt nose the cleft nose. Um, I'm not sure this has, this doesn't seem to be labeled, so I don't know if this is cartilage because they're talking about muscle. So maybe we can look into that. Um, I think this would be kind of good to go over so um apparently this is called the malar fat pad which is that um connecting pad i guess between um it's like a little bit under your tear duct where your nose um is and then it kind of it, it's sort of like what's that called the apples of your cheeks i think which goes over here, and so that causes this crease and this um, kind of fatty tissue buildup here, and then kind of smooths out when uh, your nose is not compressing. <clears throat> Guess it's called the infraorbital triangle. Did we learn that in the eyeball one? Maybe. So what else is here? Okay, this is a little bit too in depth for our needs. This is kind of interesting this part here so in this case it's kind of demonstrating um, like a more aggressive expression where it looks like um, the muscles the septum will always be at the same place but the muscles will start pulling the the nostrils upwards at an angle so this is um, if you can you can't really see this red line here, but the septum aligns with the edges of the nostrils, but in a more aggressive look um, or expression, the nostrils then start forming a V shape here. Um, it looks like the bridge and um, where the tip of the nose starts do not change, it's just the nostril itself turns into a more angular V shape. This is Anatomy of Facial Expression by Aldous Zarns. Let's bust out Bridgman. Okay, this is Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life by uh, George B. Bridgman. He's a pretty well-known artist and um, he has a lot of these books out. So. 
So, I didn't actually mark where the nose is, but I'm guessing it's not too far when we went over the eye. So here's the ear. Okay, nose. <coughs> so, um, I guess I'll read the text. The nose is in the center of the front plane of the face. Its shape is wedge-like, its root in the forehead, and its base at the center of the upper lip. As it descends from the forehead, it becomes larger in width and bulk, and at its base is held up in the middle and braced from the sides by cartilages. The bony part of the nose descends only halfway from its root and is composed of two nasal bones. The larger part is composed of cartilages, five in all two upper, two lower laterals, and one dividing the nasal cavities. Two wedges meet on the nose, a little above the center at a point called the bridge of the nose. The direction of one is toward the base of the forehead between the eyes, that of the other towards the end of the nose, diminishing in width and, it's, um, and it enters the bulbous portion of the tip. Okay, so how do we break all of this that we just read down into these three illustrations that you gave us. Well, you also, okay, you gave us a few other things here. Okay, so the nose is at the center of the plane, so that's what this is. Its shape is wedge-like, its root in the forehead, so it's talking about this root. And the base at the center of the upper lip here. As it descends from the forehead, it becomes larger and within bulk, so it's sort of like a pyramid, like this. Um, and it's held in the middle and braces from the sides by cartilages. The bony part of the nose descends only halfway from its root and is composed of two nasal bones. I think they're talking about this part. The lower part is composed of cartilages, which is the nasal, uh, the nostrils, I mean. Five in all, two upper, two lower laterals, and one dividing the nasal cavity. Okay, so I think they're talking about upper, upper, lower, lower, and then the septum. Uh, two wedges meet on the nose a little above the center at a point called the bridge of the nose is here. The direction of one is towards the base of the forehead between the eyes, which is here. The direction of one towards the base of the forehead between the eyes and the other towards the end of the nose, diminishing in width as it enters the bulbous portion. Okay. So let's switch over to this page. So let's see, in this page we have upper lateral, which is this part here. And then we have lower lateral, which is this part, which is probably like the, the tip of the nose. Then we have the wing of the nose, which is also the nostril. And then we have the septum, which is that part that connects the upper lip to the nose. And then he has drawn chunks of these parts. Hmm. How far does this go into the nose? Okay, it goes in quick. Okay. Because I'm wondering if I need to break this stuff down myself because I'm not getting a lot of information so far. So can move on. Let's see. This bulb rises as two sheets of the cartilage from the middle of the upper lip. The septum expands into a bulbous tip, flows over the sides, and flares out to form 
the alle, alle, or wings and the nostrils. The cartilage, um, cartilaginous portion is quite movable. The wings are, are raised in laughter, dilated in heavy breathing, and narrowed in distaste. The wings and tips are raised in scorn, wrinkles, and skin move over the nose. So, I guess the bulb rises as two sheets of the cartilage from the middle of the upper lip expand. Hmm. It doesn't really explain the shape of these things, though. To the next page, I guess. Let's see a comparison. Average variations in noses divide them into classes. They may have small, large, or very large, concave and convex, humped, Roman, or straight. At the tips, they may be elevated, horizontal, or depressed, flattened, uh, tapering, or twisted. The wings may be delicate or puffy round or flat, triangular, square, or almond shaped. Again, not a lot of information. <laughs> it's just telling me they can be in different shapes. So I might... So far, not a lot of good info. Um, I mean, I think the first book we went over probably gave us the most information. But um, I, I sort of would like a better breakdown of these parts and how they fit together and stuff like that. So but that's my opinion. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life. This one is Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham, and this one's a little bit more illustrative. It reminds me of like the classic comic book artist stuff. So let's kind of figure out where their nose section is. Okay, looks like it's here. Okay, nose construction. I'm gonna read here. The column at the right are the lower areas of the noses, which might be either male or female. The greater difference between the two is told by the front view where the male characteristics are less delicate. Find the name, the, the nose parts in the semi-front view sketch below. So, um, again, it's kind of telling us what we had before. This is the bridge of the nose. This is the ball or tip of the nose. Wings or nostrils of the nose. And then the septum. So it looks like those are pretty much the most important parts that we need to remember. Um, if you remember, like, the hump of the bridge of the nose, uh, that hump is where the nasal bone and the cartilage intersect or start. All right, so... In this case, uh, we can go down this list of noses that they have here. So this is pointed tip or flat septum. Um, so it looks like, again, the, well, yeah, the the nose, the ball tip is a lot more narrower, uh, narrower and it's coming at like a 90 degree angle of uh, where the septum meets the upper lip. Uh, number two is uh, so this would probably be from, indicated by uh, our other books, that this would be a male nose um, because of the harshness of this angle here. Um, the septum tapered into the tip, so this is probably a female nose because it's very upturned, the angle is very wide, it could even be a child's nose. Um, 
let's see, a septum tapered into the tip. So uh, I think in this case it's saying that uh, the septum is very narrow and then it widens out into the tip of the nose. Exposed nostrils and angled wing. So this could be female or a child because of the, the wide angle here of the septum. Um, and then expression wise, the the nostrils are, are wide, so that could mean like deep breathing or um, laughter, as we, as we read in the previous Bridgman book. Um, a pert nose or a small nostril, definitely most likely a child because of how wide this angle is. Um, nostril angled down, most likely a male. Long nostril rolled septum. I have no idea what that is. It looks like a ninja turtle mouth. Uh, so there we go. Um, angled septum. So this one actually, I've seen this a lot. So the the septum is sort of at a right angle, but then the the tip of the nose is actually upturned. So that's interesting. I think that that happens a lot with females, most likely. I'm not sure though. But um, that's number seven. Number eight, the under part flat. It looks like the nostrils are barely even exposed. And then back of the wing flattened, um, they're talking about that the nostril uh, is not round, that it's up against the face very flatly. Let's see. In the above diagram, the various external parts of the nose are identified. Notice the nasal bone comes down almost halfway before the cartilage. Okay, we kind of went over this, so that's fine. The labella is the smooth area between the brows. The profile nose is half on the face and half off. So this is the glabella here. So. Okay, um, the male nose. We'll, we'll go over this. Number one, um, aquiline tip hooked around the ends here. Um, number two, relatively flat, plain across no nostrils, so it goes straight across. Uh, three, large round ball nostrils, hidden. So um, it looks like the nostrils are turned downward, so this stuff is hidden. Uh, four, small round ball nostrils, barely discernible. So same thing, but you can see the nostrils a little bit more. Wide ball tamper, uh, tapered septum. So this is very much um, the the tip of the nose kind of reacts to um, the septum being tapered as well. So all of that turns into just a V. It looks like. And then six small ball squared. Um, so it's just a, a lot more square shaped nose. It looks like. <clears throat> okay. Uh, female nose. One, the septum drawn into nostrils. Hmm. Okay, so they don't even add the ball, uh, the ball tip here. Um, two, large straight cross nostrils. So it looks like for the men, they definitely emphasize the ball tip of the nostrils here. Well, it looks like the females, for this illustrator, they usually just indicate um, the nostrils uh, and the septum and the wings, the ends of the wings, but we're going to keep going. Three rounded nose parts, small nostril, small nostrils, and then four low hanging septum, large nostrils. So that's a lot like this one. Um, and also this is the only one that is kind of displaying the, the ball tip of the nose. And then five flat septum square wings. And then uh, sh shape some uh, consider standard. So something to, to take note of also is that you see the... I feel like you see underneath 
Well, that would make sense. You see underneath the ball tip of the nose more and it's shaded more because of that, because women have a wider angle and upturn of their nose versus the other one. Okay. Let's go into um, this one. How many pages? Okay, so we have these two more pages. Heavy text here though. Above are eight simple suggestions for front view female noses. It is usually well to um, indicate the two depressions on either side of the nose between the eyes. At least put in one of them. The nostril cavities may be lost in the thin shadow of figure two. Line may be thickened, denoting a little more shadow. This is the simplest way of treating the nose. Never put in two round holes by themselves. The two slash marks are in figure one. Um, here. So this one. Um, may be used without the outside nostril lines, but should be carefully placed. A line along the side of the female nose is always risky for the beginner and might best be left out. In three, four, seven, eight, so that's three, four, seven, eight, I guess this half. <clears throat> Feeling of light is coming from the top right. The nose will take a little shadow without any being placed elsewhere on the face proper. The corresponding bit may be added beneath the chin, however. So in this case, it's it's showing just kind of the nostrils. This one is just kind of showing the nostrils slash the shadow under the ball tip. This one kind of shows an indication of the side of the bridge and the ball tip and one side of the wing. And then this indicates shadow along those lengths. So in this case, um, they're showing a little bit more uh, that connective cartilage between the bridge of the nose and the wing. So that's what that is down here. Here are eight ways of drawing the male nose in a semi-front position. The patterns for both male and female may be interchanged. The male is usually more coarse, the female more delicate. The farthest nostril or wing may or may not be in evidence depending on the relative width and length of the lower part of the nose. The wider the nose between the outer nostrils, the more likely the farthest one will show. As the face is turned towards you, both wings will show in any event. Here, it's kind of, so this is like a three-quarter view. This is kind of showing a little bit more of the bridge again. Um, this one doesn't show as much nostril, I feel, as the female one probably because her nose would be upturned while his would be pointed downward. So most of the detail I'm seeing in these illustrations are coming from the top of the nose, like around the wing of the nostril or um, more detailed angle evidence of like the ball tip of the nose or the bridge. So that's what I'm getting out of this. Okay, below are a dozen nose variations. The completed profile with the first. Notice the different in each brow, bridge, nostril, and tip. Try them out. Let's see. Above is a reminder of the simple arcs, black lines that may be used. Don't draw the, the circles. Oh, anyway. Um, these are just indicating like the concave or convex areas of the face like we learned in the eyes. Um, so it's no big deal. Uh, if lines are drawn from eye corner to lip corner, 
The crossing point will be close to the nose tip for a straight head on view only. So it's saying from this end eye corner to this end lip corner and vice versa, the crossing point would be where the septum of the nose is. So that's a neat little trick. Um, down here, let's see. Studies similarities of nose and cheek shadows at left. These two treatments worth their weight in gold. Interesting. So it's talking about different ways to shade the nose. How much attention to give the vertical uh, alongside the front view nose? If entire face is in partial shadow, it can be ignored. If face is in full light, be safe, treat it lightly. They definitely show like angles of light where the nose is. Hmm. Cool. Okay, last page. The nose from various angles. Let's see. So one, two, three. A semi front nose. Um, so that's one, two. The far nostril removed and brought down. Look at shape okay so this is like a profile view it looks like um, the same nose and a flat profile dotted notice how the bridge line changes going back to the tilted semi front view so what they're saying is um, the more profile it is it seems like the shorter bridge or the more front view hmm it's a little bit higher in the in the full-on profile so it looks like as it's turning it becomes shorter for some reason oh wait that's not true this is they're talking about how deep it goes all right, so it's a little bit more shallow of an angle is what they're saying. And then it's a more dramatic angle when in profile view. And also the, um, the nostril wing seems to be farther set back than in the front or three quarter view. Um, one, a nose turns so that the far nostril cavity is just out of sight. So it's kind of showing that. Um, to you, only the wings rim is showing here. Okay, and then three, observe how the far cavity hugs the septum line. Being just beyond it here, the far nostril cavity is but a trace, same drawing in a line below. Okay. Um, over here, it says above examine the various cross sections of the foreshortened nose see how the base attaches to the face. Okay, so this is like a wireframe and this is a shade of view, I think. The far eye sets like the sun beyond the nose's ridge. Okay, so they're saying the eye, you can't see both eyes. Well, I mean fully, that part of it is going to be Obstructed by the the angle of the nose the Side of the nose most perpendicular to the face Here on this top the point outline at the top outline at the bottom The widest at the base at the point where the bone becomes cartilage Okay. Uh, skull cavities, cartilage area, bone, upper arm, maxilla of the skull, which makes base of the nose swell slightly here. In the diagram at the right of the skull's opening is pictured behind the nose. Um, acquaint yourself 
with the mound of bone on either side of the cavity feel on your own. This will sometimes catch the light in its gentle rise between the sink of the inside eye corner and the sink besides the nostril wing. So we're talking about this part. Okay, and then this last part. Wide furrowed septum squared onto area above lip. Under view showing angle of the wing attachment, very narrow septum. Top view, wings extra wide apart, rounded ball. Square ball, flattened under surface, low flat wing. High rounded wings, thick under undefined ball. Wing groove brought forward and down, tip flattened. Okay. And that is Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham. And I'm a little bit surprised by this one. This is actually, um, I don't know. I thought this was going to be one of those, like, I bought it at Michael's kind of book. But, uh, this is actually a lot, so far, a lot more, um, informative for that transition between anatomy and how to specifically um, capture it in actual drawing, like shading and line work and stuff like that. They're incorporating that into it, not just describing what the parts of the face are, but um, how you would indicate that in an illustrative style. So this has been pretty good so far. Um, I think it's been more, informa uh, in more informative than the Bridgman one, so, so I might be a blasphemous for saying that, but um, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Okay, um, gonna go over this one and maybe two other books, and then we're gonna go into our demo. So this one is Figure Drawing, Design, and Invention by Michael Hampton. Okay. And then this is when we went over the eye. So now we're gonna find where the noses are, so I think. Okay. Looks like it's over here. So it looks like a lot of text for this one too. Okay, so this part, I'm gonna read this part up here. Uh, or do I? Because it looks like it seems to be um, in conjunction to this part, I'm not sure. No, I can read this part, so it's fine. This page shows a variety of different shapes and views for the nose. Notice that the red lines allow you to see the importance of the box for use in establishing the placement of the nose on the face and its perspective. The varying angles and views of the nose are totally dependent on how well you understand the placing a box in space. So, um, a lot of perspective here. Having the developed, uh, having the developed the box, notice that different types of noses come from exaggerating any of the straight lines to become a variety of curves. Additionally, the underside of the nose in these examples has been broken into um, the septum and nostrils. So, um, going over this illustration, uh, it looks. Well, I mean, hmm. So, so in here, this kind of uh, contradicts the first book, 
because this is quite a wide angle when um, they were talking about that it should be kind of for children um, while a narrow angle like this one should be more for adults uh, or this one um, but what I do sort of see is um, that at the top it's a lot more narrower than the bottom um, but I feel like this is, uh, I feel like this is helpful for placement of the nose as they were talking about, but not necessarily breaking down the nose. So it, this would be good with just like structuring on the faces of the planes and stuff like that when you're first sketching out perspective. But, um, oh dang. But if that's all they got to say about the nose, then that's a little disappointing. Hmm. Yeah, that's all they have to say. Okay, so not a fan of this. Um, this is basically just saying make make a box for your nose. And, and that's all I sort of got out of it. I mean, these are great illustrations, but that, that only helps placement of a nose for me. Um, it looks like there's other stuff here, so maybe I will go into reading this. Um, uh, not really. This this kind of just talks about placement of the nose again. So they're very much into talking about the placement of it, but not like deconstructing it and how to draw one. So um, I don't know if they found that, that um, less of a challenge than like eyes or something, but. Uh, yeah, this one's a little on the disappointing side as far as noses goes. Um, but yeah, that's a figure drawing design and invention by Michael Hampton. The artwork of this one has uh, official features in it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly flip through and see. Like. This guy has came out with a lot of different books, um, but his art style's a little like out there. That it's a little hard to say. Um, so uh, he does talk about the nose a bit. So we will go into it, I guess. Um, this is Bern Hogarth, Dynamic Anatomy, the original edition, and in here. Um, he says, the nose. The nose consists of four important masses. The upper nasal mass tapered and wedged into the cartilaginous of the alar. Man, a lot of people are like naming alle, alar, like they're spelling it differently. I don't know what to call it. But um, anyway, uh, the ball of the nose and the two wings of the nostril. The ball of the nose swings into the furrowed hook. Of the septum under the base meets the pillars of the upper lip the nostril wings moving from the ball of the nose flare out to the sides in lengths of an eye apart the nostril cavities are triangulated in shape and should be drawn large enough to accommodate the thickness hmm. really get a lot out of that well i mean as opposed to like the other books I mentioned the same thing. So, um, so in this case, it, he's just giving examples of tapered wedge mass of the nose in various head positions. Um, the hook of the nose septum descends lower than the nostril wings. Well, okay, so that didn't really give us much. <laughs> so that's fine, but at least it gave us something. Um, this is Bernhu Garth Dynamic Anatomy, the original edition. Okay, last book. I don't have a cover on this because it kept like bending and tearing, but this is, um, uh, there we go. 
Can you, can you read that? Okay, The Artist's Complete Guide to Facial Expressions by Gary Fagan. So, um, this is sort of like the Anatomy of Expressions book, so I'm not sure how in detail I'm going to go over in it because a lot of it is kind of dependent on on the movement of the, the object we're studying. But, um, let's see. Oof. Okay, so this is going to be a lot of reading, it looks like. So I, I guess I'll go ahead and read this for you. Um, and, and we'll see where we'll go from there. Okay. It's hard to say too much about the eye. When it comes to the nose, people lose interest a little more quickly. In fact, this lack of excitement over the nose is carried to an extreme in fashion illustration. It's not unusual for fashion illustrators to omit the nose entirely, leaving the more fashionable mouth and eye to carry on without it. Even when included, the fashion nose is often a little more than a flick of the brush. Okay, so I remember that this guy gets pretty wordy with his descriptions on things, that he does go in depth and in detail with things, which I do like, but he says it in a lot more words than needed, so, so bear with me on this one. Um, I won't argue that the nose is of much count in facial expression, though lots of expression drastically affect the nose tip. Smiling, sneering, and immediately come to mind, we do not really react to the nose in those faces, but merely note its presence and it, its contribution to the total effect. Um, actually, sneering the nose at times does seem to be an important part of the expression. The very fact that the nose has so little to do with our emotional response to the face ultimately makes it easier to draw than an eye. There is less of a tendency to see it conceptually or symbolically, more ease in drawing it as just another form. There are two main problems people seem to have with rendering the nose, constructing the wings and the tip and making the nose appear to come out from the face. These problems are particularly severe in front view, where the wings and the tips are more foreshortened and the projection of the nose is subtle. The nose tip might be even easier to draw if it was a bit more well-defined. At least the eyes offer obvious lines that can be copied, like the line of the upper lid and the line around the iris. The nose tip, however, doesn't present us with any clear-cut boundaries, except in the profile and we can only render it determining those boundaries ourselves. And since the boundaries are rounded, their expression must be tonal, not linear. Shading rather than lines, another um, geometrical model. When it comes to shading, nothing helps us see where tonal changes must occur, like having a clear sense of planes. The nose has four main planes. Each plane is quite flat, and together they form along a wedge-shaped block. Shaped like a flat-sided brick chimney, the narrows as it rises in the upper portion of the nose where the bones of the nasal socket dominate. Um, the simplified planes of the tapered blocks serve quite well as a sort of template for rendering. We've already seen how the sides of the nasal bone make a flat, sharp turning with the front. At those edges and the other major edges of the block, we look for the value changes that will establish the nose volume. If the light is coming from the side, for example, one of the side walls will always be in shadow. One will always be lit. The block helps us organize our seeing of the actual nose. About halfway down the nose, the simply uh, the simple bony planes give way to the more complex planes of the nasal cartilage. The cartilage makes the tip of the nose tricky to get right. Cartilage is a stiff but pliable substance. It is also found in the ear and it is varies and it varies greatly from person to person. It is the cartilage, not the bone, that makes every nose so different. But before we get into the details of the nose tip, look at it again in terms of the simple block. If you see through an interesting detail, underneath it all is essentially the form we've illustrated, the end of the block. 
the wings and the rounded tip are just little bumps on the large form. They're not large enough to define enough to change the overall plane movement. If the flat side of the nose block is in shadow, for example, the wing and the side of the tip on that side will be in shadow too. The details follow the mass. Constructing the tip. A simplified construction for the nose builds on the block form with separate pieces for the septum, wings, and ball. The ball is seen as a sort of shallow dome added to the end of the block. The wings as two little wedge blocks and the septum as a flat, slightly folded plane. Underneath the tip, shapes that are particularly boxy. The angular are helpful when trying to render an area that is often a bit vague. In fact, I suggest looking carefully at sculpted and drawn heads to note how artists often make the nose tip an extra bit chiseled and angular to give it a more solid presence. Note that the nostrils are entirely contained in a downward facing planes. Beginners tend to cut them out in the sides of the nose, a major anatomical faux pas. A faux pas. Alright. So A and B here. The nose has four major planes. Get a clear sense of them in your mind, especially the bottom plane, A, which is right here, which is the hardest to recognize. The underlining form of the nose is tapering prism. The top plane, the front of the nose, is the narrowest part, which is B, this part. It turns sharply into a much wider side planes with lighting from above, and the left and the right side of plane and the bottom plane are in shadow. The top plane is brightly lit. The African mask uses the same block form for the nose. When artists stylize a nose, the prism is frequently used. It's so close to the natural form that it seems an obvious choice. Tip of the nose, here we go. The tip of the nose is the most complicated part to draw. It's composed of several separate forms, all built around the underlying tapered block, shown here with the light coming from the upper right. So, <clears throat> the tip. The nose tip is rounded at a very end, but is flattish along the sides. It's not exactly a ball, it's more like a curve in a shallow relief as if the large end of an egg had been cut off, then that shape is added to the box. It merely smooths, um, it merges smoothly with the ridge coming from above B, which is right, um, but drops off uh, sharply as it enters the sides below. The septum. Underneath the nose is a septum, a ridge, cartilage that connects the nose to the upper lip. A simple way to visualize the septum is as the covers of an opened book with the flat spine connected and the two tilted upward like this, I guess. The septum covers the center part of the underside of the nose and contains part of the nostril opening. The wings, the wings can be thought of as two wedges, like wood splitting blocks um, added to the prism along the side of the tip. Uh, though they are rounded off in life, they retain their wedge shape. The nostrils fall apart, oops, <laughs> the nostrils fall partly on the underplane of the wedge, partly on the underplane of the septum, avoiding digging them out on the sides of the nose. Okay. Um, more about the nose. At the point where the bone meets the cartilage, which is this part, is A. Look at the change in direction and the bump from here to the tip of the cartilage. So this is where the bone hits, and then this is where the nose cartilage starts. And it looks like the angle this angle goes like this, while this angle goes like this. 
Um, B, let's see, this is the break where all the cartilage of the tip meets the cartilage of the shaft. There is almost always a slight change in direction. The tip curves out more. So I think that's what, what they were talking about over here, where the ball meets the cartilage. C, over here, the septum starts here in a curved piece separating the two nostrils and making the transition to the upper lip. D, the wing is mostly flat, not cartilage, giving, uh, giving it a softer contour, softer edge look. Okay. And then, let's see, this is A, this chunk here. A, below the level of the orbit, the side plane of the nose begins to swell out. The base of the nose is the widest where the bone meets the cartilage. The form is gently rounded like a section of an egg. The transition from the top to the side is much sharper than from side to face. Than from side to face. B, which is this part, shadow sharply defines the far side of the nose. The near side is not in shadow, but as light is more in the front than the side, the side plane is slightly grayed down. No matter what direction the light is from, if there is only one main source, every major plane will have a different value. C, is this part. The tip is usually located of a sharp highlight and one of the brightest on the face. D, the nostrils look looks down, not sideways. Near edge of the nostril is a sharper than the far edge, which is closer to the face. So. So they're saying this edge is like wider than this edge. Okay. E, far nostril just shows beyond the tip. As the head turns, it disappears completely well before profile position is reached. So the cool thing about this book is it's kind of like a combination of the Jack Ham one and the Sculptor's Anatomy, or Sculptor's um, Anatomy for Sculptor's book, where it's giving you both information on how you would illustrate it while defining the anatomy of the, the body part itself, but in a pretty wordy way. Okay, so, yeah, so again, this is The Artist Complete Guide to Facial Expressions by Gary Fagan. And that is our last book, so, um, Hmm. So what I've gotten from that on, on how to actually illustrate the nose, uh, like, I think I'm still gonna have to look through reference and then kind of deconstruct it with the rule sets that they've given. So it's a little bit different than what uh, I did with the eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go in Photoshop here. stuff a bit. Rearrange the desk. Ba -ba -ba. Uh. photos or something. As a reference.
grab her. Okay. So now we have a set of people here. Let's take another swig of coffee. Okay, so I might have to do some breakdowns myself, but, um, but from what we learned, this is the, the ball, this is the ball of the nose, these are the wings, here, this is the bridge, this is the root, and this is the labella and then this is the septum so let's see so if I wanted to break this down I guess I would see that this this looks pretty round up here and then there's like quite a harsh angle between here and here, and then an angle between here and here. And then, um, looks like also she's one of those types with the, the tapered septum, and that her nostrils kind of flare out. And also she has a very soft slope, almost childlike, and also um, her nose is upturned pretty hard, too. So in that case, um, 
those notes, I guess you would have like the ball. And then she, uh, she has like a harsh angle. Um, also, where where her septum is is pretty narrow, so it, it widens out. Um, also, it looks like um, the shape of the lip is kind of beat out, so probably want to do that. Here's the root. So I guess that's her nose shape. We're gonna go into that. Um, but I guess how we would illustrate it though is that um, she has a lot more light on this side than this side. So I guess we would probably want to go ahead and like, um, let's make a new layer. for an illustrative look, you would mark that area. be her nose. So I guess kind of jumping ahead um, based off of that stuff, you would then want to try to see if we can just do looser indications of the nose then, since we're not going to fully render these out. But it's good to understand where all those shapes are when you do render them out. So um, in this case, it's like can see the nostrils tapering into that septum. And she has a bit of an upturned nose too. Um, it looks like her nostrils um, aren't really attached to her face though, because there's a lot of shadow around there.
Uh, this part is actually pretty wide, which means the bridge has to be a lot softer instead of sharper shadows. Nostrils also has to be a little bit in shadow, I guess. And um, I guess this would have to slightly be in shadow in order to show that there is a highlight there. can simplify this even even further so we have like Bella up here and it's curving he has a very slopey bridge and then he has a very bulbous uh, tip and then it looks like this actually kind of comes out to a V for the septum because uh, his lip actually goes like straight down goes in. Huh, this nostril is interesting. Um, so it kind of like smooths out, swoops out, and then kind of still has like a wide entry back in. It's interesting. because it swoops back into the wing here. I think I made this angle a little bit too sharp. Mm-hmm. 
so there's that nose. We have this nose. So this is very wide. This is like that guy he Jackman has a very angular nose Bridge is very narrow. And then it looks like 
looks like uh, all of his nose like widens. It's like an hourglass in this. So that's very angular nostrils. That one. I'm sure, that the angle though. It's so really, it's like if you were straightening it out, it'd be a little bit more like that.
She's a very, very round. Like, she almost looks like a cartoon character, like a little doll. There's going to be like a core shadow here.
put like a little bit of a more shadow here for the concave mess between the, the septum and the wings or the nostrils. Shadow in between the wings and the, the cheek here. Okay, let's go with a little bit of highlight. So this wing needs to be a little bit more in shadow. So I'm putting a little bit of a highlight on the side, but not as bright as the one at the front. This part is like really protruding out from the face. Okay, I think this is going to be our last demo for the day. But yeah, um, so that is my take on learning the nose. Um, I guess, uh, actually, maybe before we go, I should attempt to draw noses without looking at reference, huh? Let's, let's go ahead from that, but what I learned from this is definitely, you know, like the, the, the redder look, um, at the actual nostrils, um, to emphasize that part. So, let's go ahead and just do some sketch, some little sketchy doodle things. Um, so, I mean, if we want to take a page from that one book that was talking about perspective, it's doing things like uh, I can't even draw these blocks in perspective. Poof. Yeah, 
Oops. Okay, so we'll use that as like a block outs. So if, if we say this is the ball of the nose, and then we want this to kind of converge in the center where the septum is. Um, let's fill that out. And then we want like the wings. Um, to be kind of going out like that. All right. So then we can then say that these nostrils go in like that. These curve outward. Bridge the nose here. So that's a little bit hard to see, but uh, maybe we can just not be so sketchy about it and just kind of draw all the parts needed. So just need nostrils and then the wings. some indication of the ball, the tip of the nose. It's a little bit too upturned. that and then let's say for a male nose like it needs to be pretty flat here these parts. Even more illustrative, I guess you would then kind of curve out. Okay, that's a female nose because it's upturned, but if you wanted a male nose, it would be flat. So. 
female, right angle, female, wider angle. Okay, so that's where we're at. Cool. Alright, if there's anyone in chat, thanks for hanging out. I think this is the end of the segment. Alright, peace.